received from the Lord when I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread, and after he had given thanks, broken and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Thank you for, thank you for watching our virtual mass. Today in our area, we're celebrating the feast of the ascension of Jesus into heaven. For 40 days, he showed himself to his disciples, and then after 40 days, he was taken up to heaven, very like Elijah in the Old Testament, and the tongues of fire come down on the apostles at Pentecost. And today's Mass is being offered for Michael McCarthy, Mark Duffy, Bob and Dee Bauman, Edward Nathan, James Laughlin, Greg and Kitty Nolte, David and Penny Trutel, the parishioners of Most Holy Trinity, Pamela Short, Marcia Smith, or sorry, Maria Smith, a special intention for healing, Carmelique Morrow, Kerry Ziffel, Elaine Smith, John and Sonny Velkas, Darren Play Sands, and Richard Chris. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate the Feast of the Ascension, our home, our destiny, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray for the parishioners of Most Holy Trinity, Pamela Sharp, Maria Smith, for special attention for Haley, Carmelite Morrow, Carrie Zephel, Elaine Smith, John and Sonny Belkis, Dara Play Sands, Richard Chris, Michael McCarthy, Mark Duffy, Bob and Dee Bauman, Edward Nathan, James Laughlin, Greg and Kitty Nulty, David and Penny Trutel. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with dev devout thanksgiving, for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head is gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theopus, Theologus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined, enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father which about which you have heard me speak, for John baptized with water, 
but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, through Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God, God mounts, mounts his throne, throne to God. shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For King of all the earth is God, sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from a letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that was so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that men and women die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since through the blood of Jesus we have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and living way he opened for us through the veil that is his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with sincere heart in, and in absolute trust with our hearts sprinkled clean from all evil conscience of our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold unwaveringly our confession that gives us hope, for he who made the promise is trustworthy. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord, I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance would be for the forgiveness of sins, 
would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are told it with power from an eye. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands and blessed them. And he blessed them, he parted from them, and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage, and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have four different accounts of the Ascension in the Bible, and all four are slightly different. We have two of them today in Acts of the Apostles. Um, Luke is writing to Theophilus, and he explains who Jesus Christ is. And at the end of his life, he was taken up to heaven, accompanied by Moses and Elijah. They were also miraculously taken up to heaven, and Elijah is especially significant because the power of Elijah, as he was taken up, came down on Elisha, just as the power of Jesus comes down on the apostles to the Holy Spirit in the form of tongues of fire at Pentecost. We'll be celebrating that feast day next Sunday. But it's very significant, Moses and Elijah, representing the law and the prophets, Jesus is greater than both, and Jesus is the fulfillment of all the Old Testament, and he sends them on the mission. In all of the accounts, he sends them on a mission. In Luke's Gospel especially, he shows how Jesus Christ blesses them, how they bow down and worship, and then they return to Jerusalem filled with joy. And we know from the other Gospels that they went to Jerusalem and they prayed the first novena, the nine days of prayer from the time of the Ascension until Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost means 50, 50 days after Easter, and the Holy Spirit come upon them and then they began preaching, and Peter was so powerful with the Holy Spirit that 3,000 people were added that day. So it's amazing how the Holy Spirit is working in the church throughout Acts of the Apostles, and the Holy Spirit is still working in the church today. We are all called to be followers of Jesus Christ and to make disciples. Matthew's ascension account is probably the best known, and in Matthew's account, it's called the Great Commission. Before Jesus goes up, he says, Full authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then the theme of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is Emmanuel, and he says, Know that I'll be with you always till the end. And we always need to remember that, that although Jesus is God, he is still with us. He is with us uh, through, uh, through the church, through the sacraments, and through each other. And uh, the Great Commission, uh, Jesus Christ sent out his apostles to preach, beginning from Jerusalem to all the world. Father Paddy Quinn, who worked in Saltillo for many years, was a great missionary, and he said, we Christians should be the greatest salespeople on earth because we're selling the greatest product on earth the good news of Jesus Christ. And all of us need to make it a priority to evangelize and to make disciples. Somebody sent me a cute little text last Sunday, and it said, 0.0296% of children have a chance of becoming professional athletes. Point 0.296%. Very slight chance. But all children, 100%, will stand before Jesus. And the moral of the text was, get your children to church. But I think that's the way we make disciples, by, by being a good witness, by being a good example, and passing it on to others. By way of preparation for my homily, I googled, and I came across 12 marks of disciples uh, from uh, College Station in Texas. Uh, they, 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 they're very active in discipleship there, and uh, I, I thought they're very good recommendations. The first is to remember that we're called. Jesus Christ called the apostles to be fishers of men, and he didn't stop calling people when he went to heaven. 
he is still calling, and every baptized and confirmed Catholic is called to be a disciple maker, to be a follower of Jesus Christ, to be a disciple. And then we have to respond to the call. We have to say yes or no. The book of Revelation says it so well. There's no room for lukewarmness. I wish that you were either hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. So we need to make a decision to accept Jesus Christ wholeheartedly into our lives and commit our lives wholeheartedly to him. A disciple of Jesus is one who loves. There's nothing nicer than being around a loving person. And you know, most people who come to church are loving and kind and gracious and a joy to be around. But every now and again, you'll meet one as mean as a snake. And that is not what Jesus wants. Jesus wants us to be loving and to be, to be, to be, to be kind and hospitable towards each other. Jesus wants us to, make, to, to bear fruit. He said, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. A disciple is also obedient. He said, you are my friends if you do what I command you. And then we need to be taught, a disciple is taught. We need to be in the school of lifelong learning. Just because you learned the Baltimore Catechism 40 years ago, doesn't mean you know your faith. We need to be constantly learning, constantly reading the Bible, constantly reading the Catechism, and growing in our knowledge and love of God. And disciples follow. We follow the leader. We, 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 we do what Jesus did. We love as Jesus loved. We choose what Jesus would choose. And uh, we follow his example. Disciples also keep an eye on heaven. We, where Jesus is today, that's where we hope to go. And we need to keep our focus on heaven. Remember the old Baltimore Catechism Masters, why did God make us? To know, love, and serve him in this life, so we could be happy for, for all eternity in heaven with him. And disciples take up their cross. We need to follow Jesus in good times and in bad. And in every life, there is good and bad. There's good times and in bad. But in times of struggle and sorrow and illness, that's the time more than ever that we need to draw near to Jesus and give our burdens to him. Jesus said, we have to deny ourselves, take up our cross each day and follow in his footsteps. A disciple is a person of prayer. Look at the master. He spent whole nights in prayer. He was constantly in prayer. He taught his disciples how to pray. He left his two great prayers, the Our Father and the Mass. So we need to be people of prayer. Also, we need to be people of service. We need to serve one another, like the corporal works of mercy, visiting the imprisoned, clothing the naked, feeding the hungry. They are vital to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And the final one is, disciples make disciples. Wouldn't it be great if every Catholic would make one disciple this year. Look at how we would grow our church. I am very happy here at Most Holy Trinity with what I see, with the enthusiasm of people. Recently, one lady asked me to call a fallen away Catholic, that she was interested to come back to church. Sure enough, she came, went to confession, comes to Mass every Sunday, and is now in a choir. That's the spirit of evangelization. On Saturday morning, we had a group of people go out door to door. And we had another group here in the church praying for them as they went out. And we had a group in the kitchen that had a beautiful meal ready for them when they came back. That's the spirit of evangelization. And if you told me two years ago that we'd have over 250 people in most of the Trinity doing the quads, I would never have believed it. Thank God for the quads. Thank God that the Holy Spirit is alive and active here in most Holy Trinity. Thank Jesus for coming among us, for ascending into heaven, and sending us the Holy Spirit to be our comforter and to lead us to heaven.
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now please stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray for the people of Ukraine, for all our sick, for all the faithfully departed, for Richard Chris, Daryl Play Sands, John and Sonny Belkis, Elaine Smith, Carrie Ziffel, Carmel Eve Morrow, Special Attention for Healing, Maria Smith, Pamela Shore, the parishioners of Most Holy Trinity, David and Penny Trutel, Greg and, so and Katie Nolte, James Laughlin, Edward Nagan, Bob and Dee Bauman, Mark Duffy, Michael McCarthy, and all our needs. For those who work for an end to abortion, that they may be strengthened by prayer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That no one will be so attached to this earth as to regret being called to eternal life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for Ukraine and for a resolution to this conflict that is just and peaceful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That our quad members help each other become more joyful disciples of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the dead in our parish and all our families, especially Ralph Baldwin, Bobby Simmons, Ray Sheehy, Leo Copley, Mary Wickdom, and Darnell Lapree, may they rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our Lord. prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for making us aware of heaven. May we always keep our focus on heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome a past of joy, 
Every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they attain. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And today we will pray the first Eucharistic prayer with a special insertion for the Ascension and also a quote from Sister Faustina, St. Faustina on the Eucharist. She said, All the good that is in me is due to Holy Communion. I owe everything to it. I feel this holy fire has transformed me completely. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and oblivious sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard tonight and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and Louis our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth, hang on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise of the offered for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, Placed at his right hand of your glory, our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious of our Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, our spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through the merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to your God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice as part as victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar Receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, 
graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, which on the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let mindful of the coronavirus, let's offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant we pray that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching, going, peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And now I'll see if Diana can win me some money. About time, you know. The Salvaggio is very good. Got a cute email here. This was sent to me by a good friend of mine, Paul Odenthal. He said, A doctor walks into a delivery room where the nervous, soon to be parents are waiting anxiously. As the doctor comes in, the wife screams, Wouldn't, shouldn't. Couldn't, can't, won't. The panicked husband looks at the doctor and says, Doc, what's wrong? The doc calmly replies, Don't worry, it's just contractions. <laughs>